yourself. We're getting ready to go into the Word of God. Before we go into the Word of God, I want to acknowledge and say Happy Father's Day once again to all the fathers. And I give a shout out to Spring Independent School District Trustee Chris Bell. Thank you for being a part of our worship experience. World-renowned gospel artist and entertainer Sean McLemore is in the house. We wish you happy father. You, you can't come by without singing something. So after the message, grab the mic. After the message, grab the mic. And to all my brothers and sisters in this house, I am honored by all that you have said and spoken. But the only superstar in this house is my Lord and Savior. I'm grateful that he has chosen to use me, but it's all about him. The favor of God, which we are experiencing in this house. I cannot overemphasize how the favor of God on my life has been tremendous this season. The favor of God has now produced what we call lag, a look at God season. Because when you look at God, God has the ability to make turnaround stories. You don't have to stay stuck in any situation. Let me say it again. You don't have to stay stuck in any situation. The favor of God has the power to turn any situation around. The, the Bible says it is good when men come together in unity to such a point it's like precious oil flowing down the beard of Aaron. So there are enough men in here on this morning touching and agreeing in the spirit of unity that I can declare, I can prophetically declare that some man, some woman walk in here feeling low, but you're going to leave here feeling high. Not, not high off of drugs or alcohol, not high off some chemical induced high, but you're going to leave here on a spiritual high with your mind made up that I can do all things. I can do all things. I, I've been empowered, I've been inspired, and the favor of God is going to turn your life into a look at God's story. If that's you, give God some praise. Oh, matter of fact, do me a favor, let's not be selfish. Look up and down your road and praise God that somebody on your road is going to get something today that's going to redirect their life. It started from the bottom, now we're here. Yeah. That's our theme song. Yeah. It started from the bottom, now we're here. Yeah. Because the power of God has that power to springboard you to a different place in life. I wish I had a witness and hear yeah. that God is able. Yeah. Stand with me if you will. Stand with me if you will. And turn your Bibles to the book of Luke. To the book of Luke chapter 15. We'll be reading from verse 11 when we're jumping around. You've all heard the story before. It's called the parable of the lost son. But you're here today from a different direction, from a 21st century perspective. Luke chapter 15, find your way around to verse number 11. I pray you allow me just to teach this morning. I pray I don't have to even raise my voice. Just to let the word of God speak for it's, house, itself. Luke chapter 15 verse number 11 it reads like this Jesus continued there was a man who had two sons the older one said to his father father give me my share of the estate so he divided his property between them verse 13 not long after that the younger son got together all he had set off for a distant country and then swindled or wasted his wealth in wild living when he came to his senses, in verse 17, when he came to his senses, he said, 
how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. Him. Jump down to verse 25. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. Remember, there were two sons. The meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard the music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he is now back home safe and sound. Verse 28 broke my heart. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. In conclusion, verse 32, but we, this is the father speaking, but we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Take your seats and we're going to have a conversation today about the father of the prodigal son and the lost son. Man, I see in this text, in, in this block of scripture, and you don't mind if I just let the text speak for itself. Happy Father's Day, Pastor Hutchinson. God bless you. There are three men in this story. We see the father, and the father here in this story, in this parable, is symbolic of God. So when you see the father in this story, it's to put you in the framework of seeing God, God the Father. Now the younger son, he is described or identified as most of us at some point in our lives where we lost our minds. I wish I could get a witness this morning. We haven't always been where we are, who we are. We haven't always thought the way we think. We haven't always articulated the way we are articulating. Many of us, like the younger son, we found ourselves in a foreign land, in a foreign place, wilding out. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here that would give God some real praise that God has delivered you from you. I know you see me marching and protesting against this and that, but the real injustice is not the white man's injustice. The real injustice is not police brutality. The real injustice is the way you treat yourself. So we see the younger son, and then we, we see the third character in this block of scripture. That's the older brother, and that, 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 that's what I'll call Reverend Bell. That's what I call the some of us who want to be. The, the wannabes and any crowd you will have some, some wannabes some, some people who, who will pretend like they don't know anything wrong some people who will pretend like they are above the crowd you know you always got to have some people in the group that feel like they better than everybody else that, that's why some people will only associate with the people in their family that's going through a difficult season to make them feel better about themselves well it doesn't bring me any joy to see my brother or my sister down because when I see my brother or sister down. It inspires me to extend my hand to pull my brother or my sister up. Don't throw me no parade because I'm doing well and my brothers and sisters are dying on the street corners. We should get out parade and get on the street corner and win our brothers and sisters back to the Lord. So we don't want to be a church like the older brother, hypocritical and always judgmental and always putting our fingers down saying, look at us, we're much better than you. No, if it were not for the grace of God. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to contain myself, but if it were not for the, the grace of God. And let me, let me just drop this in the atmosphere. I'm going to just put it out there and leave it. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. Oh, okay, okay. If God loved the world, that means God loved everybody. Because there, there's nobody... That came through the birth canal of a woman that's not born in the world. So when the Bible says God so loved the world, that means everybody. So for those who have a problem with me walking with my brother and my brother's name is Muhammad, shame on you. Because God so loved the world. And then let me drop this in on your spirit. Not only did God so love the world, God says whosoever. So what gave you the right to decide who were the whosoever? God said whosoever Not just folks who look like me Not just folks who sound like me Not just folks who worship with me On Sunday 
Sunday morning, God said he loved the world and whosoever. So I'm dropping that in your spirit this morning. Stop being so judgmental. When God said to whosoever, that's the kid with the tattoos. That's the young lady who had a baby before she got married. That's the person who's been on drugs. That's the person who just got out of jail. That's where the person in jail. That's the man in his white mind and the man with the PhD. I don't care who you are. If you came to a market now, you are a part of the whosoever and I can't determine nor decide who belongs in the category of the whosoever. That's why in this church you will see somebody with a PhD sitting next to somebody who just got out of prison because we all are part of the generation whosoever. So, 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 see, today my goal is to speak truth into all three groups of men and women. Because I believe every man can relate to one of these men in this story. But if I dig deep into a text, let me pull this point out. And many of you are not going to like this. Because you've never heard it before. And you've heard your story a, a thousand times. But I got a question. A father with two sons. Where's mama? Okay. Mm. <laughs> this is not a story of a deadbeat dad. This man is raising two sons alone. Let's pause and celebrate and encourage every man in here that's man up and raising his children with or without a woman in the picture. There are some brothers in here that are super dads. They have become mom and dad. They learn to comb hair. They, they learn how to go to the pharmacy that time of month and get the... Yeah. Oh, come on, now. Don't, don't, don't fool me now. Let's celebrate every man who's man up in here and took responsibility of his family. If, uh, if not, he had a woman in the picture. Yeah. Yeah. On Mother's Day, we go hard. Yeah. Celebrating super moms. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't see no parades okay. on Father's Day. Yeah. And there's some super dads in the house also. Yeah. There are some men that will take care of their families no matter what. That's right. That's right. Thank you for But I don't see the Hallmark cards no. on Mother's Day saying, Happy Mother's Day, single dad. But if you go to the store today, you will find a roll of Father Day cards for single mothers. The devil is a liar. There are some men in this house that have stood up, manned up, and taken care of their responsibilities. Let's celebrate them. Fathers matter too. Yes, fathers matter too. Yes, yes. And we will encourage fathers to keep them strong and keep them going. Fathers are like the offensive line. The only time you hear their names is when they've done something wrong. Offensive line, the quarterback can't shine and the running back can't run. But the offensive line gets no credit unless they've made a mistake, unless they've received a penalty. But I come to refute that. I stand up and I applaud every man in here that's taking responsibility, that's blocking off the enemy, that's blocking off depression, that's blocking off that bozo that's trying to maneuver your daughter, that's blocking off poverty, that's blocking off sickness, every weapon formed against your family. There are some men in here that have prayed their family through. And I honor you, brother. I honor you, man. I rise up today to tell you I salute you. I'm a student of the Bible and a student of history. And I noticed something in this text. This father is not called a widow. So that means the mother is not dead. And many have preached the sermon that if she was dead, but if she was dead, the father would have been labeled as a widow. Because if you study biblical text, whenever the spouse dies, that 
spouse that's left is referred to as a widow and because the indication here is not he was a widow that means mom was still alive she just wasn't active uh, you know you don't want to shout right there you know, if I was talking about deadbeat dads, you'd be jumping up, high five, and turning flips. But well, I'm talking about a deadbeat mama, nah. See, the, the Bible says that the Bible says the sons of Issachar was considered wise because they knew the time, and I know the time, and I know every woman is now a super mama. So, 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 I say, Lord, but well, where was she if she wasn't there? And the Spirit spoke back to me in the 21st century. She was in one of three positions, Paul. She, she may have been locked up. Because black women in America are six times more likely to be locked up and incarcerated than any other woman in America. The highest ratio of people getting locked up now is not the black man, but the black woman. So mama may have been locked up because the new orange is black. And I dug a little deeper and this blew my mind. 64% of women that are incarcerated is somebody's mama. But what do you do when your mama is locked up? What do you do? Jesus. Number two, if she wasn't locked up, maybe she was hooked up. Come on, son. Come on. Uh -huh. yeah. From prom queen okay. to dope fiend. Maybe she had took so many pills that she was non-existent, yeah. trying to escape the realities of life. So she's numbing herself because she can't deal with the realities of womanhood. So now she's hooked up and annoys herself with so many pills and, and, and so many drugs that, that she's out there somewhere. And she's left her boys to be raised by their dad because in her mind, she's made her mind up, I no longer fit in the equation. Jesus. And if she's not locked up or hooked up, maybe she's turned up. Oh. 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 Can, can, can I talk to somebody here? Chancellor, don't, 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 don't be twisted. There are some women who have chosen twerking over mothering. Are you preaching here? Come out, come out. I ain't got time to take care of no children. It's happy hour. I, I, I know you. I just said, that, that man crazy. You know, he know that 8% of his congregation is women, and he going that hard to paint against women. They ain't going to show up next Sunday. The devil is a liar. Yeah, he is a liar. Yeah. The prodigal son, Come on, Pastor. he decided he wanted to experiment with the world. Come on. Not being wise enough to know the world don't play fair. When we think that there's something better out there, without realizing that once we get out there, it's a jungle. <laughs> and let me drop this in for every single parent, male or female, those who are called custodial parents. Every child needs the influence of both parents. Amen. Amen. Right. Let me say that again. Every child needs the influence of both parents. If you and Keisha don't get along, that's fine. But you still have something, brother, inside of you your child needs. And, and, and listen, Keisha, when you stop your baby daddy from interacting with your baby, you are stunning your child's growth because when God gave you children, he called your children a gift and God wouldn't give you a gift without instructions on how to properly handle the gift. So whenever you deny one parent the right to interact with their child, you're putting that child at a disadvantage because mama got something and daddy got something that that child needs to reach their full potential. So you're not just hurting the daddy or you're not just hurting the mama when 
when you hold a kid back. You're hurting the kid because you're stunning their growth because a child is born with the potential to be great, but God puts something in every father and every mother to give that kid instructions and directions to be great. That's why the prodigal son went out in the world because he was missing something and he was trying to find that thing that was missing and he thought that wasn't, wasn't at home, it was in the world. And many of us are running our children to the world because we're being mean with the one we lay down with. He may not be fit for you, but he's still the father. And when God gave him the seed to produce the child, God also gave him a seed of wisdom to instruct the child. That's right. Come on, man of God. And by the way, let me drop this in. He used to fit. All right.
And then the Bible says, the Bible, you walking through the text, the Bible says he hired himself out. He hired himself out. See, bad decisions will have us living beneath our standards and depending on systems that are not designed to take care of us in the first place. But because he made a bunch of bad decisions, now he has to depend on a system that was stacked against him in the first place. He had to hire himself out to the enemy. And many men have made decisions that have cost them their freedom. And watch this, in prison, a man can work for a Fortune 500 company for 10 years and produce great wealth and profits for that company. But as soon as they release you, you're now disqualified from working at the same Fortune 500 company you work for for free. Now you check the box that you have a felony and know you can no longer work there anymore. But you've made that company millions of dollars over your 10 years of free labor. One of the reasons you see me hanging around politicians is not because I'm going to run for office, but it will change the mindsets. Because I'm going to put the man or whoever runs for mayor, whoever runs for city council, whoever runs for governor, whoever runs for president. I'm not concerned if you're black or white. I'm concerned what you care about. And I'm going to put the man or every politician that I'm in a relationship with. I need to find out every company that benefits and make a profit of prison labor. And when those guys get released, put the man on them to re-educate and rehire them. Don't use them. Slavery is over. We just celebrate. Juneteenth, slavery is over, and I'm not gonna let you lock my brothers and sisters up and use them and abuse them. And then when they get home from doing their time, you ain't got time. Can, can I tell you the truth? That's why they killed Dr. King. Not because he had a dream. Not because of the Freedom March. They killed Dr. King because Dr. King had started changing his language. Dr. King started talking about economic power. Do you preach it? They, they weren't concerned about marches, but he was talking about taking down Wall Street. He hired himself out. Watch, 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 watch this. Watch this. Watch this. this is where the blessing comes in. At. In the midst of all that, he came to his sister. Oh, you ought to shout right there. In the midst of all his bad decisions, in the midst of his jacked up dilemma, the Bible says he still came to his sister. And that lets me know it's never too late to get it right. It's never too late to become the man God created you to be. It's never too late to be the father God designed you to be. It's never too late to reach and discover your purpose. It's never too late. He came to his sisters. Never too late. One of my goals is to help men that I entered a covenant relationship with to come to their senses. And to encourage them to reach their full potential. Yes, man. Because when a man, watch this, tweetable moment. When a man comes to his senses, he realizes what don't make sense in his life. That's why the devil wants to play tricks with your mind. So is a man thinking, so is he. If the devil got me thinking that being a man is making babies, if the devil got me thinking being a man is how fly and swag I can be, he got my thinking all jacked up. But when I come to my sis, I start prioritizing what makes sense and what don't make sense, and I eliminate every relationship in my life that don't make sense. I'm not worried about having friends. Uh -huh. I'm worried about what makes sense yeah, yeah, yeah. for my assignment yeah. on planet Earth. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. But when he came to his senses, uh -huh. when he came. and I'm almost finished, when he came to his senses, uh -huh. a transition took place. Uh -huh. He says, I'm going back. Yeah, you hear this? I'm going back. I'm going back to my father's house. That's what the Bible says. Try 
train up a child. Not knock down a child. But tell the child he's like his no good daddy. That's knocking down. That's not training up. Train up a child. Tell your child you're brilliant. Tell your child you're wonderfully made. Tell your child you are a star. Tell your child you are a superstar. Tell your child you have unlimited potential. Tell your child you can be great. Tell your child if you follow the directions of your mama and your daddy and line your life up with the word of God, there's nothing you cannot do. Train up the truth. In a foreign land, uh -huh. in a hog's pen, uh -huh. but you don't know about no hog's pen. When he found himself in a crack house, when he found himself in a drug house, when she found herself on the spoon, when she found herself laying with every Tom, Dick, and Harry, when she found herself, when he found himself, he realized if I can get back to my father's house. Son, bring my son. 
Everybody that came out of a woman's womb is your brother. 